little dry. Well, if your lawn is looking a little dry, you're going to have plenty of opportunity for some shower and thunderstorm activity this week because okay. we have a daily threat of thunderstorms. Okay. Okay. Today, pretty limited, which is good news because a lot of people have outdoor plans. We've got festivals going on. Lots so, of festivals, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully we'll try to keep it dry for you. But we are looking at just a 20% chance of some showers and storms. We have dry skies right now. We are looking at some shower and thunderstorm activity off to the north currently, and we will be continuing to monitor for the threat of at least some spotty showers and storms for today. Today. It is warm this morning, 80 degrees out at the International Airport. Feels like 85 degrees when you factor in that very sticky dew point of 76 degrees. So certainly a very warm start to your day. It's 74 degrees in Brandenburg, 76 degrees in Frankfurt. High temps today in the lower 90s. And again, a 20% chance of some shower and thunderstorm activity. We're going to be taking a look at that daily threat of thunderstorms coming up in just a few minutes. Well, still no word this morning on the whereabouts of a Bullitt County man who police say could be in danger. Craig Ikes was last seen Wednesday afternoon. He was living with a woman whose body was discovered in a burned out home on Audubon Drive. Her name has not been released. Now, Ikes is six foot four and about 175 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to call the Bullitt County Sheriff's Department. Well, a weekend boat crash on Lake Michigan killed two people and injured another in northern Indiana. Authorities say the boat crashed into a break wall near the marina in East Chicago early yesterday morning. The coroner pronounced two people dead at the scene. No word on how seriously the third person was hurt. Conservation officers say reduced visibility, speed and alcohol are believed to be factors in this crash. Police departments here and across the country are looking for ways to honor officers killed in the line of duty. They're all important and they're all significant because these are all people that just went to work that day to do their job. The Hillview Police Department has a display with the name and picture of every officer who's died on the job. Police Chief William Mahoney says the memorial demonstrates the dangers his officers face, but he adds it also reminds them of the importance of the work they do. Police officers have more of a, of a sense of service to others, not to themselves. So they do what they do, not because they want to get some thanks from it. They do it because they feel like it's a job that they need to do. According to the Officer Down Memorial page, more than 30 officers have been shot and killed in the U.S. this year. Every day and night, LMPD officers serve and protect. The deputy chief says applications have been down the past couple of years, but this year they plan to hire up to 122 new officers. They're also working to increase the relationship between the men and women in blue and the citizens they serve. Hello, Officer Wonka Metro Police. I stopped you because you didn't come close to stopping at the stop sign there. This is body camera video from an 8th Division officer during a traffic stop. It's video like this Mayor Fisher and Lieutenant Colonel Rob Schroeder say is making policing and the community safer. We want to be as transparent and open with the public. Show them that, show the public that we are not afraid to let you see what we're doing and why we're doing it. Schroeder says since wearing body cameras over the past year, LMPD has seen a 13% increase in calls for service from the public, 21% reduction in officers being assaulted, 7% decrease in citizen complaints, and a 35% reduction in the use of force by officers. To continue improving police community relations, a citizen advisory board is in the works. Taking citizens from our community and bring them into our training unit and have them look at our training curriculum, give us input, feedback, and, and be able to share and educate them with what the training we're already doing. Another step announced by Mayor Fisher, all Metro employees will be trained in identifying and eliminating bias. We need to recognize each other's common humanity. The more we do that, the better we can move forward together. The three-step plan of body cameras, an advisory board, and bias training is just the beginning. Community forums and discussions will continue to give everyone a chance to voice their opinions. We're not going to be able to build that legitimacy that we really need to build unless we have those tough conversations. There are two groups at LMPD not using body cameras right now. That's the SWAT members and the K-9 unit. LMPD is working to resolve some technology and safety issues to allow both groups to wear the cameras. Well, several events this weekend honored first responders. People were invited to participate in a youth empowerment 5K run at Shawnee Park yesterday morning. It was sponsored by the Louisville Defender newspaper. This was a community outreach effort for law enforcement and other emergency personnel. Especially as young recruits, we need to um, 
we need to get involved with the community early on, um, set an example, if you will, learn more about the community. I enjoy be, uh, the uh, camaraderie, I enjoy uh, the walk, and I enjoy the breakfast afterwards. <laughs> well, the event was a part of the 23rd annual Louisville Defender West Louisville Celebration. It continues this afternoon at 3. And in southern Indiana, it was Law Enforcement Appreciation Day at the Vintage Fire Museum. The owner thanked police for helping after a break-in at the museum three years ago. He says they caught the suspect and prevented what could have been a disaster. First responders and their families were given free admission yesterday. Community activists are organizing a peace festival in West Louisville. It will showcase classic cars and about 20 artists from comedians to singers, painters and rappers. Organizers decided to hold the festival at Shepherd Park because of its violent history. Local activists want to change that reputation. They've organized Peace Fest so everyone can come together for a positive reason and share inspiring messages filled with hopes of a better and safer community in West Louisville. Today, each and every one of us has the opportunity to wake up and dedicate our lives to what counts in life, to what is right. That doesn't mean you have to be the most enlightened person, but it does mean you can turn away from everything that was negative and bad in your life yesterday and become a positive role model for change throughout all of humanity, throughout all the globe. Peace Fest will be held Saturday from noon until 8. The city of Louisville is going to celebrate its German heritage this fall. Mayor Fisher recently announced the return of Strassenfest. It will feature live music, craft beer, and lots of things to do for families. Strassenfest is set for September 24th from 11 to 9 at 4th Street Live. It is free for everyone. Well, Louisville Grows invited the community to celebrate the summer's harvest at the People's Garden this weekend. There was food and activities for those who went to the event on 44th Street yesterday. You could also learn about growing vegetables in your neighborhood. Louisville Grows works to improve the city's urban agriculture. Well, at 536 on this Sunday morning, the game of Pokemon Go has swept the nation, but the race to find characters has led to several accidents and even arrests. We'll have more details just ahead on WLKY News. And we're going to be talking about another hot day today. Temperatures in the upper 80s, lower 90s, the high of about 87 degrees for Corden, 92 degrees for Lebanon, 90 in Newcastle for today. A 20% chance of some scattered showers and storms on this Sunday. We're going to be looking at a daily threat of shower and thunderstorm activity as we head into next week. We'll take a look at this machine. It is a portable wave machine and Lucy Pet Foundation is taking it to cities across the country to challenge dogs in a surf contest. Oh, oh. oh <laughs> auditions will also be held in Chicago, Houston, Orlando and New York. What in the world? Well, come on. I love now it. the winners will ride a float in the Rose Parade. <gasps> the foundation's goal is to raise awareness about the importance of spaying <laughs> and neutering. That will get it. your attention. Oh my goodness. They're so cute. I need my dog to do that. And yes. they're, they're oh doing pretty gosh. well. They're doing really well. Way better yeah. than I would do. Well, but you know what? They do have four legs. Right. We That's only have true. two. They're, they're a little true. bit more stable oh than we are. Oh my gosh. So yeah. cute. We yeah. need that in Louisville. A little Certainly. lower to the ground too. Yes. Oh, yeah. Lower center of gravity <laughs> that helps with surfing. And they look cuter. They do. If I were doing that, I would look terrible. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Yeah, wobbling everywhere. You know what, guys? We would like to have a portable wave machine maybe here yes. because That'd it is be going nice. to be steamy mm -hmm. for today. Once again, high temperatures recover into the 90s. It's going to feel hotter than that. Our southern Indiana communities will most likely be in the upper 80s. Well, you're going to have a little bit additional cloud cover. Great looking shot here. Pretty picture from Churchill Downs this morning. It is a steamy start to your Sunday. We're going to be looking at temperatures in the lower to perhaps mid 90s in a couple of areas. Unsettled weather for this upcoming work week. We're going to be talking about a daily threat of showers and storms. It doesn't look like we're going to be dealing with all day rain events, but certainly especially during those peak heating times of the day during the afternoon hours. We're going to be watching for shower and thunderstorm activity to bubble up. And it's not out of the question that some of those storms could be on the strong side with also the additional concern of some heavy rainfall. So we'll be watching it closely and tracking it throughout this week, of course, to let you know the very latest and refine those details on timing. But for today, we're just looking at that 20% chance of a shower or storm. Most areas stay dry, but certainly because we're going to be hot, we're going to be humid. It doesn't take much to spark up a thunderstorm with some very heavy rain, so we'll watch for that. 
As we go ahead and take a look at your forecast, staying quiet throughout the morning hours, we're going to see some passing cloud cover into your afternoon hours. This is when we're going to be looking at some of those showers and storms bubbling up. Again, just about a 20% chance of some of this thunderstorm activity, but significantly heavy rainfall could be possible with any storm that we see during our afternoon hours. Even into the evening, we're going to be watching for the threat of some scattered showers and storms. Tomorrow it looks to be a dry start, and then once we take you into the afternoon hours, you can guess it, shower and thunderstorm activity bubbling up once again. And then as we take you into your Monday evening, still continuing with that threat of at least some scattered showers and storms, and we'll do the same on your Tuesday. 80 degrees out at the International Airport. We have a feels-like temperature heat index value of 85 degrees. Look at that dew point. It is very sticky out there this morning. Temps uh, across the region right around 74 degrees in Elizabethtown. We're coming in at 74 degrees in Paoli. Here's a look at your seven-day forecast. And again, we do have that threat of showers and storms this upcoming week. 91 degrees on Monday, upper 80s on Tuesday. A 30% chance of showers and storms on Wednesday. We hold those chances at 40% on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Southwest says it has fixed computer problems, which caused hundreds of flights to be canceled. But passengers should get to the airport early because there could be long lines. The airline's website crashed last week, which canceled nearly 700 flights. Now, there were some Southwest flight delays here in Louisville. Well, in just two weeks, Pokemon Go has become the most popular mobile video game ever. Players are pretty easy to spot, starting staring at their cell phones, eagerly looking for little monsters everywhere. Now, the problem is that they're having trouble keeping track of their surroundings while they're looking for those monsters. Just last week, two men chased a Pokemon off a cliff in San Diego. And the game led a teenager across a busy street in Pittsburgh where she was hit by a car. The game also landed this woman in jail after she decided to chase a Pokemon into the Toledo Zoo after hours. But rangers in Los Angeles are encouraging players to come to their parks by offering Pokemon tours. So you just want people to stay on the trails? Stay on the trails, yes. Stay on the trails and avoid danger that could possibly be out in nature, like rattlesnakes and poison oak and ticks. <laughs> and the Louisville Zoo is encouraging Pokemon players to visit as well, as long as they follow the rules. Visitors can get a dollar off their ticket when they show their Pokemon Go app on Sundays through August. Meanwhile, Pokemon Go is getting a corporate partner. McDonald's will become the first major corporation to collaborate with the makers of the wildly popular game. Small businesses have bought objects in the game, but no companies officially partnered with the company before now. The video game app has become a smash hit around the world. A new consumer report study says 40% of the food produced in the country ends up in the trash. Carter Evans visited the Aria Casino and Resort in Las Vegas, where they've come up with a creative solution to recycle old food. The buffet at the Aria is an endless array of mouth-watering delicacies piled high. Last year alone, this hotel had some 7 million pounds of leftover food, but they didn't throw it away. I look at this buffet here, I see crab legs, all this wonderful food. Where does it end up? It ends up at, at the hog farm. That's right, pig slop, made from sushi and roast beef. Most importantly, none of it goes to a landfill where it decomposes into the greenhouse gas, methane. According to consumer reports, food waste is the biggest component of landfills. And the biggest food wasters are families. For every four bags of groceries, that the average American household buys, one of them gets tossed in the trash. Consumer Reports senior editor Dan DeClerico says food expiration labels, sell by, best buy, and use by are confusing, causing people to throw away food that's still edible. Congress is currently working on legislation to standardize the labels. There's a, a lot more wiggle room than, than people realize. That sell by date is, is, you know, oftentimes just a best guess from the manufacturers. On the Vegas Strip, Aria and 10 other major MGM hotels are so committed to recycling food, they tear open almost every trash bag in search of scraps they may have missed. Carter Evans, CBS News, Las Vegas. Another big contributor to food waste is imperfect produce. Consumers and retailers just won't buy fruits and veggies that are oddly shaped or bruised. So last week, Walmart started a pilot program in Florida where they're selling ugly apples at a discount. 
And speaking of Walmart, it remains the world's largest company. That's according to the latest list of the Fortune Global 500. It finds the retailing giant earned $482 billion in revenue last year, placing it ahead of a massive utility company in China and China National Petroleum. Well, you can take a bite out of the international cuisine without having to travel overseas. Lay's is rolling out four new flavors inspired by foods from around the world. Now, they include dishes from China, Greece, Brazil, and India. Lay's says research shows three in five Americans are feeling more adventurous when it comes to trying ethnic cuisines. I'd try them. Yeah. Ethnic cuisines, yes. Eth ethnic Chips. cuisines in potato chips hey. but you know what they do know. this every year and it's such a marketing mm -hmm. ploy because yeah. they have the news talking about it because yeah. they have all these unusual flavors like what do they have like they sausage have, like, and gravy one yeah year. maple, maple they have all these syrup and yeah something. waffles and syrup that's yeah. it yeah they have succeeded because what are we doing talking about it yep and there's the curiosity factor. Yeah. You're right, Suzanne. Okay, guys, we're going to be talking about another hot day today. Temperatures in the upper 80s, lower 90s for today. And we are expecting to see that risk of some shower and thunderstorm activity, not only for today, but also for this upcoming week. So we'll have much more on your forecast. More than half of all Americans will suffer from some form of mental illness at some point in their lives, and patients say the stigma associated with it can leave them feeling ashamed and isolated. But as Marley Hall explains, one New York City woman is using her voice to inspire others to turn their pain into power. Rachel Griffin can turn just about any feeling into a song. God, I miss them and who I used to be. That's really sad. I know, isn't it sad? The New York City music teacher suffers from anxiety and depression. Now is her mission to fight the stigma of mental illness. When she was diagnosed 10 years ago, finding treatment wasn't easy. She says talking about her illness was even harder. I felt like I was defective. I felt like there was normal and then there was me. Rachel says she poured her experience into writing and producing a musical. Welcome to your new life. We Have Apples is a comedy set in a psych ward. You must have messed things up pretty bad. Many scenes are inspired by Rachel's own struggles. I'm willing to be vulnerable if I can help that one person who's in pain thinking this is never going to get better. I have an ocean rolling in. Her musical debuts in New York City this September. If you had told me when I was really struggling that my life would look like it does today, I would not have believed it. She hopes her work will help others share their stories. Yeah. Marley Hall, CBS News, New York. Well, music is said to be what feelings sound like, and a local camp is taking that a step further. It's using rock and roll to help empower young girls and teach them to embrace their beliefs, their differences, and their personality to become the best woman they can be. Take a look. Basically confidence building. Um, young women um, of all ages uh, really need that confidence boost in the world today. So what we want to do is let them know that this is a safe space and they can uh, express themselves however they want. With every beat of a drum or the strum of a guitar, these girls are being molded by music. It's all a part of the Girls Rock Louisville camp created by professional musicians in the community. So then we're putting them in bands where everyone knows a different genre, a different style of playing, or some people have, this is their first time picking up an instrument. Some people have been playing for years. Through music classes and instructional seminars, they learn to appreciate how music can bond people together and break down barriers, stereotypes, even prejudice. You get to see the girls adapt to each other, learning different styles of music, learning to come together with one idea. You learn how to work together as a team. You just get to hang out with lots of girls. You get to meet new people and you get to be around music. They also take part in mentoring programs to build character. Planned Parenthood holds seminars about emotional health, self-worth, and relationships. They're also encouraged to find their creativity with classes, like silk screening. A lot of the girls that are here um, are great artists, uh, not just through music, but painting and writing. 
They're so creative, and uh, we want to be behind that. Like, it's about like loving yourself and accepting yourself and being confident in your talents and your abilities, and um, knowing that if you love yourself, then no one else can bring you down. Well, Girls Rock Louisville Camp is for girls ages 10 to 18. The week-long program wrapped up yesterday. A local business is capitalizing on Louisville's economic momentum. Wheel Fun Rentals offers Segway tours around the city. Colin Mayfield gave one a try. Well, the small business Wheel Fun Rentals has been here almost two decades offering experiences and fun. You can't get anywhere else. It's the only Segway tour organization here in Kentucky. We have an 85 acre park to ride. It's a, it's a lot of park to walk in. So having a bike to ride is really an important way to get around the park and circulate through the park. Owner Rob Reynolds started the company back in 1998 at Waterfront Park. He says once the Big Four Bridge was put in place, business took off. The addition of the Big Four Bridge now, they can ride across the bridge and visit the Indiana side of the river as well. Will Fun offers different options too, like different bikes for a family joyride, or for a tougher challenge, three unique guided Segway tours. One of the most popular is the route taking riders by Museum Row, Whiskey Row, and a host of A-list restaurants. They really get to see what downtown has to offer, and that's it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. A lot of bikes that accommodate multi-families. Reynolds says of his three locations in Cincinnati and Indianapolis, Louisville's is unique. And half of our people are local residents that go come down to the park and bring friends and family. The other half are people visiting, just happen to find us on the web or just happen to see us on the road. Hoping to continue to attract new visitors, Wheel Fun is incorporating two new ideas. One involves Pokemon Go for the younger crowd and the other focuses on Segway team building activities for businesses. We'll load our Segways up and set up a course for team building and an experience on a Segway. People haven't done that before. Colin Mayfield, WLKY News. Wheel Fun Rentals is open seven days a week from 10 to 9 with different rates depending on your ride. And if you're headed out there today, certainly stay hydrated because we're going to be talking about some steamy temps for today. We're watching some shower and thunderstorm activity off to the north. This is going to throw us some additional cloud cover for some of our southern Indiana communities for today. We're also going to be looking at temperatures that are going to be toasty with highs in the lower 90s. This is WLKY Louisville, live, local, late breaking. Your complete news coverage for Greater Louisville starts right now. Well, good Sunday morning to you at 6 a.m. I'm Ann Bowden. I'm Carolyn Callahan. Christina Mora is out this weekend. Another hot weekend and a, a hot day again today, right, Suzanne? We had 95 degrees yesterday. It's certainly Ooh. steamy out there. Yeah. And we're looking at temps in the lower 90s for today as well. And the heat indices reached what yesterday? Yeah, they were well into the 100s in many locations yesterday. So certainly a very hot day. And we're still looking at some warm weather for today. I think in some locations we'll probably see a little additional cloud cover today versus yesterday. Thanks to a disturbance that's well off to the north that's going to throw some additional cloud cover our way. With a live look outside, you can see a great looking shot here this morning. Love to see all the horses on the backside at Churchill Downs. We will be looking at at uh, hot weather once again for today with those highs in the 90s. Unsettled weather as we take a look at this upcoming work week forecast. Strong storms will be possible. We have a daily threat of thunderstorm activity for this week. Now you'll notice that we are seeing some clouds passing off to our north. That's thanks to that disturbance that we're seeing uh, pushing through sections of Indiana and through Michigan, tracking over into sections of Ohio. That is going to have some impacts on our weather by bringing us some additional cloud cover. As we head throughout the day today, especially during the afternoon hours, you'll notice some spotty showers and storms beginning to bubble up during the heating of the day. And we'll continue to have that risk of some shower and thunderstorm activity as we head back to work tomorrow. Much more on your forecast in just a few minutes. Breaking overnight in Indianapolis, conservation officers are investigating a late night shooting that injured three people at a state park. Officials say they got the call just after 11 last night of shots being fired at the Fort Harrison State Park property. Once on scene, officers found a large party with an estimated 150 people. The three people who were shot were taken to area hospitals and are currently listed as stable. Well, some inmates could be getting out of jail and being placed on house arrest. The Commonwealth attorney says Metro Corrections is too full. 
The jail overcrowding problem is happening across the state. Emily Maha is at Metro Corrections to tell us more about the plan to cut down on overcrowding. Emily. And Carolyn, Metro Corrections can safely hold about 1,800 inmates. Right now, the Commonwealth's attorney says the Department of Metro Corrections is close to holding 2,200 inmates. Now, some of those inmates could be getting out of jail and going on house arrest. Low-level offenders, nonviolent offenders will be eligible for house arrest. Anyone charged with murder, assault, or multiple felonies won't be getting out of jail. Moving low-level offenders into a home arrest program will free up space in the jail. The Commonwealth's attorney will sign off on each release. Uh, they're going to give us 48 hours notice so that we can look at the list and if we have some objections to voice those objections. And the Commonwealth's attorney says some of those inmates could be getting out of jail sometime this week. Reporting live this morning, Emily Maha, WLKY News. Thank you, Emily. An autopsy is scheduled for this morning for a dismembered body found in southern Kentucky. According to WBKO TV, the body was found inside a floating container in Green River in Hart County. State police say the discovery was made yesterday morning. That investigation continues. Authorities believe they found the remains of a missing Ohio College student. The Fulton County Sheriff says investigators found the remains Friday night in rural northwest Ohio. The University of Toledo student Sor uh, Soraya Jolin was last seen riding her bike Tuesday. Authorities have arrested 57-year-old James Worley on an abduction charge related to her disappearance. The sheriff said he anticipates additional charges will be filed in the case. The autopsy has not yet been completed. A man who police say killed his girlfriend is in jail on a quarter million dollar bond this morning. Jonathan Herndon appeared before a judge yesterday. The 48 year old is charged with murder, tampering with physical evidence and abuse of a corpse. He's accused of killing Connie Thomas and hiding her body under a pile of clothing. Her body was discovered on Gerald Court a week ago. Based on a note Herndon wrote, investigators say it appears he planned a murder-suicide. He was found unconscious and under the influence of drugs. Herndon is due back in court next month. Well, demolition crews have brought down a building in West Louisville, which was the site of a deadly accident. 70-year-old John Dozier was killed while doing some work for the owner of the vacant building on 28th and Grand Avenue. The front of the brick structure collapsed on Friday. The coroner's office says Dozier was pinned between a large beam and a metal drum. Co-workers of a murdered Northern Kentucky couple came together in honor of their memory this weekend. Robert Jones and Crystal Warner were last seen July 3rd. Yesterday, the gym where Warner worked held a memorial workout for the couple. Those who attended say Warner and Jones were people who brought the community together. You knew when she came in, you knew when she entered the room, you're like, Crystal's here. Basically just out here to support them, show the community kind of what we're here for and uh, actually raising a little bit of money for the families. The couple's former tenant, Craig Pennington, has been charged with their deaths. He remains in a Marion County jail on a $2 million bond. Witnesses say they saw Pennington shoot the pair, but Kentucky State Police are still searching for their bodies. Still no arrests one month after a cab driver was shot in the Parkland neighborhood. Abdurrahman Muhammad continues to recover. He was shot one month ago on 32nd and Hale Avenue while on the job. Muhammad, who's from Somalia, has four children. Yellow Cab is offering a $12,000 reward for any information that will lead to an arrest. Well, since Indiana Governor Mike Pence was selected by Donald Trump to be his running mate, there has been some security upgrades to the governor's mansion. In the week following the announcement, there's been protesters outside of the residence. Also in that time, nearly a dozen concrete barriers have been placed along the edge of the mansion, as well as more security guards are visible on the lawn surrounding it. The governor's mansion, built in 1928, is situated on six acres in Indianapolis. And Indiana's State Republican Party Committee will meet this week to pick a new candidate to replace Mike Pence on the ballot. State Senator Jim Tomes, Lieutenant Governor Eric Holcomb, Congresswoman Susan Brooks, and Congressman Todd Rokita are all vying for the GOP nomination for governor. Whoever is selected will face off against Democrat John Gregg in the November election. The committee will vote on Pence's replacement on Tuesday. Superheroes braved the heat last night for a good cause. Each July, the Hosferis Lunar 5K attracts close to 1,000 people for a unique night race. The race started and ended outside of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium last night. Many runners and supporters dressed in their superhero costumes. The event benefits the people Hosferis 
Hosperus serves in 33 counties in Kentucky and Indiana. And people who stopped by the Blues Brews and Barbecue Festival spent much of the day searching for shade. Event organizers say people who plan to come to the festival today should stay hydrated. The festival runs from 1 to 7. It is at the Louisville Water Tower Park. Well, a unique flea market is happening today along River Road. The Summer Flea Circus will be held at the American Turners Club. Now, you can enjoy vendors, live music, food, sports, and some circus acts. Admission and parking is free. The event starts at 11 this morning and goes until 7 tonight. It's nice if you have a pool, if you have some air conditioning, mm -hmm. you can sit in, all yeah. that good stuff with this weather. Yeah, <laughs> certainly, because we're going to be looking at very warm weather for today with highs in the lower 90s. Uh, we do have about a 20% chance of some showers and storms for today. Here's a look at your out-the-door forecast. 7 a.m., 79 degrees, sun coming up at 639 this morning. At 9 a.m., 83 degrees, upper 80s by noon. So we will warm up quickly for today. We'll have much more on your forecast coming up. WLKY, a store clerk stops a would-be robber, plus 12 ways to help lose belly fat, and a slideshow of UK football's new practice facility. You can see those stories and more right on the WLKY mobile app or WLKY.com. We'll be right back. Well, nearly two dozen families gathered this weekend for the annual Wednesday's Child Picnic at Kentucky Kingdom. WLKY's Liz Epperman, you saw her there. She was there for the event, and the Wednesday's Child program helps assist families who adopt older kids or those with special needs. If it wasn't for Wednesday's Child and this event, we wouldn't be able to afford. There's no way we could afford to bring all of these guys to, uh, to Kentucky Kingdom. Now, the program has connected hundreds of children with forever families. You can watch Wednesday's Child segments weekly right here on WLKY. Such an amazing program, isn't mm -hmm. it? And mm -hmm. Liz, hats off to her. Oh, been doing it for yeah. so many years, and so many kids have been adopted. But yeah. for that event, for mm -hmm. some of the festivals uh, going on, the, the run last yeah. night, the 5K run last night, still hot. Mm -hmm. They were smart to do it at night, though. It's July. That's but it was true. still hot. Yeah. Well, temperatures are normal. High temperature for this time of year is 89 degrees. So. Mm -hmm. We would expect to see some toasty temps, and that's what we saw <laughs> yesterday. We hit 95 degrees yesterday. And as we head throughout the day today, we're going to be looking at temperatures topping out most likely into the lower, uh, perhaps mid-90s on this Sunday. Great shot here from Churchill Downs. Uh, we're going to be expecting to see perhaps a touch more cloud cover for today, especially in sections of southern Indiana. Warm and muggy at noon, 89 degrees, 93 degrees at 5 o'clock, 83 degrees at 10 o'clock, and staying very warm throughout the day today. Now, as we're taking a look at our WLKY Doppler network, you can see all that shower and thunderstorm activity that's well to the north that will have impact on our forecast for bringing us a little additional cloud cover especially across sections of southern Indiana for today as we make our way throughout the day you can see quiet conditions through 9 a.m. Even into, uh, let's say, midday, we're going to be watching for some of that spotty shower activity to begin to bubble up. And here's the deal. While not everyone sees the rain, it's one of those situations where any rainfall or thunderstorms that are able to fire up could contain some locally heavy rainfall. So it will be significant to you if you see one of those thunderstorms putting down some uh, very heavy rain as we make our way into your afternoon hours. But notice the scattered nature, so not everyone picks up on some of that thunderstorm activity. We'll still hold on to the risk of some storms as we head into your uh, evening hours. And then for tomorrow, we'll be watching for dry skies during the morning with scattered showers and storms bubbling up during the afternoon hours. You can see that here. This is Monday at 2.30. As we take you into Monday evening, we'll continue to have that risk of at least some scattered showers and storms. It's going to be a very unsettled work week ahead. We're going to have a daily threat of showers and thunderstorms. Right now we're in the upper 70s at Bowman, still at 80 at the International Airport with a heat index value of 85 degrees. That's because of that dew point. It's really muggy this morning. Temps across the area coming in at 73 degrees in Campbellsville, 73 degrees in uh, Elizabethtown and Hardin County, 75 in Madison this morning. Here's a look at your seven-day forecast. And again, we are going to be looking at that threat of some showers and storms on a daily basis. Lower 90s for today and tomorrow. Upper 80s on Tuesday with a 40% chance of showers and storms. 88 degrees on Wednesday with a few storms possible. 87 on Thursday, that 40% chance of showers and storms. 88 degrees on Friday. We continue with that threat of some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity even into the weekend. 
Well, the countdown is on for the Democratic Convention, which starts tomorrow in Philadelphia. And this weekend, presumptive nominee Hillary Clinton and Senator Tim Kaine made their first appearance together as running mates. Sally Kidd reports from Philadelphia. Taking the stage for the first time as running mates, Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine rallied supporters in Miami. He is qualified to step into this job and lead on day one. Kane is a senator from Virginia and former governor who has a long history with Clinton, something he shared with the crowd in both English and Spanish. I'm grateful to you, Hillary, for the trust that you've placed in me. And we're going to be compañeros de alma in this great lucha ahead. As the number two guy, part of Kane's role will be going after opponent Donald Trump. From Atlantic City, to his so-called university, he leaves a trail of broken promises and wrecked lives wherever he goes. Analysts say Kane was the logical choice for Clinton. He's safe, he's kind of boring, he doesn't have any obvious baggage, and he comes from a swing state. And winning Virginia will be key to capturing the White House, and Clinton is no doubt hoping her running mate can help deliver. Sally Kidd, WLKY News. Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergren Grimes is among the speakers at the Democratic National Convention this week. Hillary Clinton's former rival Bernie Sanders is also slated to speak at the convention. Clinton is scheduled to accept the Democratic nomination in a speech Thursday night. Well, next weekend you can enjoy a world championship Yay. racing event on the Ohio River. And here to tell us more about the 2016 Voyager Canoe World Championship is Laura Malillo Barnum. And Laura, this Great is such a you. cool event and the boats, so much fun. Oh, and you've rode before. We, Yeah, it, let me tell you, if you're She's thinking about great. being a part of this, you better be in shape. I it is a know. fun competition. <laughs> so it's this coming Saturday mm -hmm. down at the waterfront. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're hoping we have right now over 30 teams. Oh my goodness, So 100% Laura, that's of awesome. that goes, so it's over 200,000 meals. Wow. That'll stay right here in Louisville, because as you know, one in five little kids mm -hmm. right here in Louisville mm -hmm. is at risk of going to bed hungry. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful opportunity to bring the family. Mm -hmm. We're going to have um, food trucks. We'll have some beer for those of age. <laughs> um, the mayor's going to be there. He's going to row. That's awesome. And um, it's going to be a really fun day. We have bands and mm -hmm. it'll just be a very picnic family atmosphere. And talk about the organization that you, it is benefiting because it's so yes. key right now. Kids are getting ready to go to school and there True. are so many school kids who people don't realize they're going to school hungry. And you're exactly right. Over almost 68 percent of Jefferson County public schools are on free and reduced, mm -hmm. which means they're at the poverty line or below the poverty line. Mm -hmm means in the summer, if they don't go to school, they're not going to receive those meals. Mm. So Dare to Care has wonderful programs. They've got emergency programs mm -hmm. for those, box food. They have mobile pantries. They also have this uh, backpacks so for kiddos on the weekends so that they can make it through the weekends. Mm -hmm. And then we have a wonderful feeding program. So that's after school, and they can go there and receive a hot meal and some uh, help support with Wonderful. education. Wonderful. So, there's some great programs out there to help those almost 200,000 people in Kentucky and wow. are at risk of, of wow. going to bed hungry. So, and so being a part of this and coming down to the waterfront to enjoy it, yes. let's give the details because this is so much fun. Now the 2016 Voyager Canoe World Championship will be held, as you heard Laura say, next Saturday, July 30th on the Ohio River. And the first race starts at 2 and the championship race will be held at 5 p.m. And again, the proceeds benefit Dare to Care Food Bank. So if you'd like more information, you know where to go. Just go to our website at WLKY.com. Laura, always a pleasure. Thank you, It'll Ann. be a fun day. I already Thank know it. Thanks for having us on. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up on WLKY, we continue our gun debate series by looking at a class that's teaching ordinary people how to fight back in an active shooter situation. You won't want to miss it. Stay with us. Preparing for the unthinkable, some local families are looking for ways to protect themselves in the event of a mass shooting. This morning, I dig deeper into active shooter situations and what you can do to protect yourself. A nightclub in Orlando. It's devastating and it's something I wish no one had to go through. 
a movie theater in Colorado. It is something that's in the back of my mind every day. A church in South Carolina. It's an increasing reality. Caller's indicating she thinks there's an someone An elementary in the school in Connecticut. I think those could be my kids, my students. That's, that's when it gets you. An FBI study looked at 160 active shooter incidents in the United States between 2000 and 2013. In those cases, 486 people were killed, more than 500 wounded. He's in the classroom. Shootings became more frequent the last six years of the study. The suspect is down. In 21 active shooter incidents, unarmed citizens successfully restrained the shooter. Here's what I want. I want Jesse you Walker runs River City Self Defense in Louisville. He teaches people what to do if they're face to face with a killer. They don't get to wait for, you know, Superman to, to swoop in and help them. Inside his training center. We've been running and hiding since we were kids, right? We were taught to do that. He's teaching students to tackle, beat, and disarm. I hope I never have to use these skills that we're learning, but if the situation were to come up, you, you have them in your hip pocket. This is active killer defense training. Knowing how to handle an aggressive situation, whatever it may be, is incredibly valuable. Karen Cook is a former teacher. It's training she wishes she had years ago while working in Washington, D.C. Her school went into code red after reports of an active shooter. I ended up just standing in front of the window praying. Thankfully, it was a false alarm. Students and staff at Jefferson County Public Schools take part in unannounced active shooter drills twice a year. Each and every child is taken into a safe location that can be locked so somebody can't get in. Um, the lights are turned out. Everyone is told to remain quiet. The schools also only have one entrance people use during the day and all visitors must sign in. Yes. Stephanie Capacer is a preschool teacher in Louisville. My number one priority are those babies and making sure they're safe. She, her husband and son all take self-defense classes. As a society, we think that happens somewhere else or it will not happen here. But the people in Orlando, the people in Newtown, the people in, um, in South Carolina, they didn't think it was going to happen at their place either. Let them know that you're trying to help. Walker teaches Where's his the students Where's to the evaluate the situation, the find the closest exit, determine if you can get there safely, or find a place to hide. If you can't and don't have a gun, take charge. Moving that line of fire out away from the targets. If you do have a gun, Walker says, make sure you think before you shoot. Do I have a good shot? In all the chaos and in all the movement, am I going to be making things better or worse? The Department of Homeland Security says if the shooter is at close range and you can't get away, your chance of survival is greater if you try to take the shooter down. Walker wants everyone to have the training, but he hopes no one will ever have to use it. If the bad guys know that all of these people around the country are there training and hardening these targets, they make those targets less enticing. In active shooter situations, some victims die while waiting for first aid. So in Walker's defense class, he also teaches how to take care of people who are shot. A youth soccer league in southeastern Indiana is trying to bounce back after thieves stole their uniforms and equipment. Now, police say earlier this month, four teenagers broke windows, spray painted, and stole the equipment from the Say Soccer Group in Rising Sun. We're told it was about $5,000 worth of soccer gear. Without all those supplies and without the fields being lined without, you know, our coaches volunteering. There isn't any soccer and then the kids aren't able to play. I was sad and then I was kind of angry at the same time. Um, I just got kind of emotional. The board president says they've already received help from Belterra. At last check, team members have raised about $900 so far. Well, what started out as a punishment now has four teens giving back to their community. The group of soon to be high school brothers and their cousin are making their way through the city, cutting lawns and trimming weeds for free. Two months ago, when Travis Durham found himself in trouble, his mom told him to go cut the lawn at an abandoned home in their neighborhood. But now the teens are spending their summer vacation helping out their neighbors. If you don't answer the door and your yard needs cut, they're gonna cut your grass and you'll get a postcard on the door. It makes me feel like, I really got people out there that care. Like, it's more people that care about the community. 
Now, while the teenagers do all the work for free, they do have a GoFundMe account set up for donations. The cash helps cover costs, but the family says they'll use some of that money to help pay for a trip for the boys to go to visit Walt Disney World. 627. Yeah, it is excellent. They are, their mom too is just so excited that they are doing this. It kind of backfired on her because it was a punishment. <laughs> they ended up loving it. But that GoFundMe account mm -hmm. has, I mean, it, tens of thousands of dollars. Does it? Yeah, and people are donating uh, lawnmowers to them and oh other equipment. Goodness. So it, it's huge. What a lesson for those young men. That'll mm -hmm. last them for a lifetime. Absolutely. Wow. It's wonderful. Well, it is 628 now, and a convicted killer is set free from prison under a state law. Now the victim's family is pushing for changes after learning he was arrested again. That story is next. Right now it is 628, an absolutely gorgeous picture here from Churchill Downs. The sun is coming up, officially rising at 639 this morning. We are expecting temperatures to soar into the 90s once again for today. We'll have much more on your forecast coming up. Watching WLKY Morning News. 6.30 now. We're so glad you're waking up with us. We were just talking about those neighborhood kids yes. that are mowing lawns. Oh it's gosh. been hot out there, too, and they're doing it out in this hot weather. Well, and, you can and see you that they the were sweating. The yeah. More than $65,000 has been donated. Now, originally, this was for a trip to Disney. I have to believe that either that's going to be quite some trip to Disney <laughs> yeah. or this is going to be used for some other stuff. Maybe College school, education, maybe business. Yeah. I don't know. Wonderful. But more than 65000 And we were talking about I said that they're probably going to start a business yeah. and have this be, you know, a career and, you know, Asia, they're unbelievable. Awesome. They are awesome. That's wonderful. Kudos to mom. No see? kidding. Now, hey, moms, listen up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, and our, that was our punishment always was work growing uh -huh. up. So there's something to be said for that. Absolutely. It here is, is indeed. a great looking shot here this morning from Churchill Downs. Beautiful picture here. You'll notice that we have a little bit more cloud cover today versus uh, perhaps the past couple of mornings. We are watching a disturbance that's farther off to the north and that will throw some additional cloud cover, especially for sections of southern Indiana. Pretty picture here also from our camera at the Bristol in Jeffersonville. As we take a look at your forecast for today, we are looking at another warm day with highs recovering into the lower 90s, 79 degrees at 7 a.m. The sun officially comes up in about eight minutes from right now. 9 a.m., about 83 degrees, upper 80s at noon, so we will warm quickly. We are dry currently, but we will be watching some shower and thunderstorm activity bubbling up a little bit later today. About a 20% chance of showers and storms for today. You can see we are seeing some rain across sections of northern Indiana as well as through sections of Michigan. For us, we're anticipating high temps recovering into the 90s once again, and we'll be watching for that 20% chance of showers and storms. We'll have another look at your forecast coming up. Suzanne, overcrowding at the Louisville Department of Metro Corrections could mean some inmates will be getting out of jail and going on home arrest. The Commonwealth's attorney says Metro Corrections is housing nearly 4,000 more inmates than they should. Emily, Emily Maha, go ahead. Sorry, Emily <laughs> Maha is live at Metro Corrections to tell us what's causing the overcrowding program problem, rather. And Carolyn, the Commonwealth's attorney, says state prisons are full. That means inmates who should be going to state prisons are staying here at Metro Corrections longer. Last week, a Jefferson County judge issued an emergency order, release low-level offenders into house arrest programs. Anyone charged with violent crime, like murder, assault, or multiple felonies, won't be eligible for release. The Commonwealth's attorney says the number of inmates across the state has increased, heroin fueling the problem. As soon as the judge says, here's your sentence, they become a state prisoner. And there's usually a hold for a couple of days to move them out of the county jail onto the state system. As soon as they stop moving those people out, then the jails became more crowded. And the Commonwealth's attorney says inmates could be getting out of jail and placed on home arrest starting this week. Reporting live, Emily Maha, WLKY News. Emily, thank you. Still no word this morning on the whereabouts of a Bullitt County man who police say could be in danger. Craig Ikes was last seen Wednesday afternoon. He was living with a woman whose body was discovered in a burned out home on Audubon Drive. Now her name has not been released. Ikes is six foot four and 175 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to call the Bullitt County Sheriff's Department. Well, state police are also investigating a deadly shooting in southeastern Kentucky. It happened early yesterday morning in the Pineville community in Bell County. When troopers arrived, they found a man who had been shot to death. 39-year-old Melissa Sanchez admitted to shooting the man. She was arrested at the scene and has been charged with his death. 
Planning is underway for an event to honor a fallen Kentucky State Police Trooper. Eric Chrisman died in June of last year after his cruiser hydroplaned across traffic and collided with a tractor trailer. Now his family and friends are planning to host a memorial 5K walk and run to benefit and a benefit concert this September. Organizers say proceeds will go to a scholarship fund set up in Chrisman's name at his high school alma mater, Christian Academy of Lawrenceburg. They hope the money raised will help students go to college. Eric was um, a graduate of Western Kentucky and he was very proud of that and um, that college degree meant a lot to him and so this will help somebody here at Cal reach that same goal. Organizers say proceeds will also go to Trooper Island, a camp for kids developed by Kentucky State Police at Dale Hollow Lake. Louisville police officers can expect a sweet treat when they go to work over the next week. A group of LMPD wives is making police survival kits and delivering them to each division. You can see the care packages in these pictures. Each one includes an encouraging message and, of course, candy. We're told this is an effort to remind Louisville's police officers that they're loved. And I thought this is a great way, you know, to just tell them that we love them. We want them to encourage them to be brave, to be courageous. And, and I thought this was just great. It's not small. It's not a small token of appreciation. It's a large token of appreciation. And uh, we don't know how to reciprocate that. Uh, but it reaffirms that our families love us, they support us, and they want us to do the job that needs to be done every day. The group plans to deliver the care packages to officers at all LMPD divisions. A Louisville family cries for change to a state lawmaker and a law that catches the attention of a local representative. Now, House Bill 463 allows the early release of violent felons, even rapists and killers. But as I found out, some lawmakers are calling for possible reform. It's definitely upsetting. Um, and here we are two years later and I'm back at square one. In November of 2014, we met with Susie Barber after she and her sister, Deborah Austin, found out their mother's killer, Sean Patterson, had been released early. He met my mom one month, murdered the next month. Six months later, he killed her. In May of 2000, Patterson stabbed Joanne Patterson while he was on home incarceration for another domestic violence case. He received 17 years with a plea deal for manslaughter and ordered to serve at least 85 percent. But House Bill 463 allowed his early release and into a mandatory reentry program. Joanne Patterson's family says they were never notified. I was so shocked and so angry. I was shocked into anger. Now, more pain. Days ago, police arrested Patterson again. Police say he beat a woman and dragged her off a TARC bus. Patterson posted a $500 bond and is on home incarceration. For Joanne's daughters, they feel helpless, just like the day of their mother's violent death. I found out she was gone, and I didn't have any control over it. And it took me back there. Uh, we need to learn about this situation, and we need to see what we can do to make sure that these kind of things never happen. Representative Jim Wayne wrote House Bill 463 along with Justice and Public Safety Secretary John Tilley. Wayne says the true success of the program is the rehabilitation of its offenders. It's also saved the state tens of millions of dollars. But he says it is now time to take a closer look at the bill. But we do need to go back. We need to look at the statistics and we, we need to see where the bill needs to be um, amended to improve it. Now, from 2012 to 2014, nearly 10,000 inmates were released early, saving the state almost $30 million. Representative Jim Wayne says he is eager to talk to the family of Joanne Patterson about the future of House Bill 463. 638 this morning, experts say sex education should be a part of your child's next doctor's visit. The results of a new study coming up on WLKY News. And here's what we're expecting for today. Temperatures right around 79 degrees at 7 a.m. Sun officially coming up in one minute at uh, 9 a.m. right around 83 degrees, 89 degrees at noon. Our forecast high takes us into the lower, perhaps mid 90s for today. Then we're looking at several chances of shower and thunderstorm activity in your seven day forecast. Now, your WLKY weather with Suzanne Horgan. And good morning right now it is 641 and as we take a live look outside, isn't that a beautiful shot here this morning from Churchill Downs? 
We are looking forward to another steamy day for today. If you don't have air conditioning, uh, perhaps try to head to the mall or someplace that will uh, cool you off a bit because we are talking about some steamy conditions for today. Taking a look at your forecast, 89 degrees at noon at 5 o'clock, a 20% chance of some scattered showers and storms, lower 90s. It's one of those days where if you see a thunderstorm, most likely it will contain some pockets of heavy rainfall, maybe some gusty winds as well, but many areas will stay completely dry throughout the day. Warm and muggy still this evening with temperatures in the lower 80s. Taking a look at our WLKY Doppler network, you'll notice we're dry across our local area right now. We do see a cluster of some shower activity well off to the north. That's going to bring us some additional cloud cover as we make our way throughout the day today. Let's talk about our rain chances. You can see as we make our way throughout the morning hours, we're doing just fine. Into the afternoon, this is when we're going to be looking at some of those storms bubbling up with the heating of the day. And again, while not everyone sees the rain, this will provide a, a fairly significant downpour in any one location that we see any of this thunderstorm activity bubbling up. So do keep that in mind. Into your Sunday evening, again, we'll have that risk of maybe a few showers or storms, but lots of dry time. Tomorrow, as we head back to work, you'll notice that we'll start out dry, then we'll bubble up some shower and thunderstorm activity. Once again, as we head into the afternoon hour, some locally heavy downpours can't be ruled out. Once again, this is going to set the stage for what looks to be a pretty unsettled seven day forecast with basically a daily threat of some showers and storms. So it's one of those weeks you need to keep your eye to the sky. And of course, with that WLKY weather app, we've got the interactive radar and notifications that can be sent right to your phone. So a good opportunity to check that out. It's still very warm, even this morning, 80 degrees at the International Airport. This is usually the coolest point of the day, so we're still pretty mild right now. 79 degrees at Bowman Field and 77 degrees here at WLKY. Temperatures across the area, 75 degrees in Madison, 73 degrees in Campbellsville. Our forecast high right around 93 degrees. Southern Indiana, you'll most likely stay in the upper 80s for today with some additional cloud cover. Lower 90s tomorrow, upper 80s on Tuesday. A 40% chance of showers and storms on Monday and Tuesday. A 30% chance of some thunderstorm activity on Wednesday. Then we ramp up our showers and storms Thursday, Friday, and into Saturday. Well, health officials in the United States are investigating a case of the Zika virus, which may not be related to travel. Jamie Yukis has more on what's being done to prevent it from spreading. Health officials in Florida are looking into what could be the first case of local transmission of the Zika virus in the U.S. Local transmission would take place if a person returns to the U.S. with the Zika virus, then is bitten by an uninfected mosquito, and then that mosquito bites an uninfected person. We anticipated that, and as soon as it's discovered, local and state health departments and the CDC promptly will do uh, interventions to make sure that the spread is very, very limited. Zika will not establish itself widely in the United States. There have been more than 1,300 cases of the mosquito-borne virus in the U.S., but almost all have been related to travel. 14 were sexually transmitted. CBS News has learned sexual transmission has not been ruled out yet in the Florida case. The people who get bitten by a mosquito, 80% of them don't get sick at all. If you do get sick, you'll have aches and pains, a rash, and conjunctivitis. Florida residents are being urged to take precautions to protect against mosquito bites, including removing standing water from their homes and wearing insect repellent. Jamie Yukis, CBS News. This concern remains to pregnant women because the virus can cause serious birth defects. Well, parents should pay more attention to what their children watch. New research shows kids exposed to virtual violence through TV, movies, or gaming could become more aggressive, violent, or even fearful. The American Academy of Pediatrics suggests parents view games and movies with their children, make a media plan for the family, and protect kids under the age of six from all violent media. A new report says children should be getting sex education from their pediatrician. The American Academy of Pediatrics says doctors can help ensure teens are getting the information they need about issues of sexuality. Chris Martinez has more. Have you had to use your asthma pump recently? 14-year-old Ryan Herrera's annual checkup with his pediatrician includes a conversation about sex. So do you feel comfortable that you have a place to go if you have questions about things like that? Yeah. 
A new report from the American Academy of Pediatrics says pediatricians should play an active role in educating young patients about sex. The AAP says sex education is effective in preventing and reducing the risk of teen pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases. We want to make sure that whatever issues they're dealing with, they have an uh, open forum to talk about those issues. The report finds one in three teenagers doesn't get any information about their sexuality from their pediatrician. The AAP says support from pediatricians and school programs can help parents and teens communicate better. Ryan's mom acknowledges she doesn't know if he's getting the information he should. I'm pretty sure he does, but not as much as what needs to be known. But Ryan says he's comfortable asking his parents for guidance, and so are his friends. Parents would know more because they've been through it and they can tell them what they really need to do. Conversations that could help keep teens healthy. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Baldwin Park, California. The AAP says while teen births and pregnancies have been decreasing since 1991, the U.S. continues to lead industrialized countries with the highest rate of adolescent pregnancy. Well, new research shows that more adolescents are diabetic than previously thought. A study looked at 2,612 to 19 year olds. It shows rates are higher than originally estimated. Researchers say many diabetic teenagers also go undiagnosed. Well, Louisville ranks among the top 20 in a new list of stressed out cities. No kidding. Well, <laughs> Wallet Hub used a number of factors from workload to money and family. It found Detroit tops the list of 150 most stressed out cities, followed by Mobile, Mobile Alabama. Now, Louisville hits the list at number 12. Cincinnati wasn't far behind at 16. Indianapolis was 21st. And least stressed out city was Fremont, California. Is that where people retire, probably? I guess we need to book our trip there. De-stress a little bit. Seriously, Louisville 12. I, know, that's I, I would have thought me. that New York City would have been the yeah. most stressed mm -hmm. out city, yep. but I suppose economics also play a role in mm -hmm. it, and there's sure. a ton of money in New York City, too, right? <laughs> that's right. The so. traffic here, maybe it's our traffic. That stresses me out. <laughs> I think traffic everywhere is stressful. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Although Shelbyville Road at 5 o'clock on a Friday, that's stressful. Pack your patience. Okay, guys, we're going to be talking about a pretty start to the day. You can see a great-looking shot here from Churchill Downs. It is going to be another warm and sticky day with high temperatures. We're covering most likely into the 90s once again. We'll also hold on to the risk of at least some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity for today. A 20% chance to see some of those storms firing up this afternoon. A Texas hospital found an old school way to deal with stress. Betsy Booth has spent more than three decades in the high stakes, often high stress world of health care. The registered nurse was looking for ways to help her colleagues relax, so she turned to coloring. In the moment, in the present, when we do that, the part of our brain that handles fear and anxiety, the amygdala, actually has an opportunity to relax and cool for a little while. I have definitely um, had great results with my anxiety and my stress level significantly decreasing just by coming in here for about five or ten minutes and just coloring and really distressing for that moment. It works for me too. It's not just hospital staffers. Patients are keeping coloring books close while dealing with a difficult diagnosis or to relax during chemotherapy treatments. With renewed support from the community, the Kentucky Science Center is now hoping to further its early childhood education initiative. It's called Science in Play. And as Colin Mayfield explains, the Science Center is hoping to engage children at a very young age. Well, the new exhibit, Science at Play, is gaining momentum here at the Kentucky Science Center. They're celebrating the one-year anniversary and adding many new things to interest kids. Laughter and learning is at an all-time high at the Kentucky Science Center. We're working that uh, early end of the pipeline with this Science in Play initiative and all of our early childhood work and really focusing on 21st century skills. After a $350,000 grant from PNC and the Grow Up Great Foundation, Science in Play 
Progressive Early Childhood Education staple is getting a renewed push. Our youngest citizens are our best scientists. The center is adding and expanding programming Thursday, Friday and Saturday to magnify skills like collaborating, problem solving, persistence and communication. We've embraced this philosophy of loose parts. Uh, which is being talked about around the nation as being a great way to foster learning, especially in young children. And, and what it really gives young children is the opportunity to, to um, test themselves, uh, to work also uh, in collaborative groups. Conjuring up curiosity, a new space called Lights, Colors, Splat tugs at children's creativity and replacing the old with something much newer, a reinvented water table gifted by the Louisville Water Company Foundation, a design inspired by 11 children under the age of 10. At age four, five, six, seven, eight, really saw their ideas and their, uh, the things that were in their imagination come to fruition. You know, they were the ones that said, let's have steam, let's have jets of water, let's have whirlpools. The Science Center believes that input proves how valuable 21st century skills can be at an impressionable age. Reporting, I'm Colin Mayfield, WLKY News. Now in the fall, the Science Center will take Traveling Science in Play exhibits to counties across the Commonwealth. The title First Gentleman is one Americans are increasingly getting used to. There are six female governors in the United States right now. And as CBS Sunday Morning's Faith Sally tells us, this election year First Gentleman could have particular significance. Good morning. Meet Andy Moffitt, husband, a working father. Slow down, buddy. And gardener in chief. So the other day I was out there, you know, cutting the hedges and cleaning, and some guy came by and he said, hey, hey, does the governor live here? And I said, yeah, and he said, well, if you see her, tell her she's doing a great job. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's pretty easy for Andy Moffitt to get an audience with the governor of Rhode Island. You look beautiful. He's married to her. Gina Raimondo is the first female governor of the state, which makes her husband the first what? I do remember being at an event where uh, I, was, I was a group of seniors. The man who was introducing me sort of paused. He said, this is Andy. He's the, uh, what, what's your title again? <laughs> he looked back at me and I explained first gentleman and all the older men and older women, they all laughed and kind of giggled. How are you, Mayor? Good to see you. Nice How to see are you? you, too. Good. good. Andy Moffitt is Rhode Island's first, first gentleman. And while that title may not exactly roll off the tongue, you might want to get used to it. Dan Mulhern, former first gentleman of Michigan, says the role reversal can be humbling. His wife, Jennifer Granholm, served two terms as governor. Did it change your marriage? Oh, sure, yeah. How? For a man to see your wife in the position of power and prominence all the time, for you, and for your you have to think about how to manage yourself and how to manage your ego and how to play roles that are unusual roles. That story plus actress Kristen Bell in a museum of art on the streets of Philadelphia. Those stories and more this Sunday morning right here on WLKY at 9. And we are looking forward to another steamy day for today. Taking a look at our temps across the area at noon, 89 degrees at 5 o'clock, 93 degrees at 10, right around 83 degrees. We are still looking at a 20% chance of shower and thunderstorm activity for today. We ramp up those rain chances, however, as we head back to work. We'll have a check of your forecast coming up. This is WLKY Louisville, live, local, late breaking. Your complete news coverage for Greater Louisville starts right now. Well, good Sunday morning to you at 7 o'clock. The sun is up. I'm Ann Bowden. I'm Carolyn Callahan. Christina Mora has the weekend off, and that sun is up, and it has been real hot these <laughs> past few days, and that's going to continue, right, Suzanne? That trend will continue. We're talking about temperatures in the lower 90s. We made it to 95 yesterday. Ooh. 
Today, a little bit more in the way of cloud cover, perhaps, but we're still looking at warm and muggy conditions on your Sunday. We'll also have about a 20% chance to see some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity. With a live look outside this morning from our camera that we have at Churchill Downs, you can see a little bit of cloud cover out there. A pretty start nonetheless, right at 7 o'clock. Here's another live look from our camera that we have at the Bristol Restaurant in Jeffersonville. Doesn't that almost look like a picture here? A little bit of fog out there this morning. Taking a look at our weather headlines, staying hot today with those highs in the 90s. We have a very unsettled work week ahead with daily threats of shower and thunderstorm activity and the potential to see some heavy rain and even some strong storms as we head back to work. We do have dry skies across our local area right now. Shower and thunderstorm activity bubbling up across portions of Michigan back through sections of northern Indiana and that's going to bring us some additional cloud cover throughout the day. We are still going to be quite warm. Lower 90s in Madison, upper 80s in Salem, 88 degrees in Corden for today. High temp of 92 degrees in Elizabethtown. We're looking at highs right around 93 degrees in Lebanon. And we will be watching for those showers and storms to bubble up as we make our way into your afternoon hours. Much more on your forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Now back over to Carolyn. Thank you, Suzanne. Breaking overnight in Indianapolis, conservation officers are investigating a late night shooting that injured three people at a state park. Officials say they got the call just after 11 last night of shots being fired at the Fort Harrison State Park property. Once on scene, officers found a large party. They say an estimated 150 people were there. Three people were shot. They were taken to area hospitals. They are currently listed as stable. Well, some Louisville inmates could be getting out of jail and be placed on house arrest. The Commonwealth Attorney's Office says that Metro Corrections is too full. The jail crowding problem is happening across the state. Emily Maha is at Metro Corrections to tell us more about the plan to cut down on overcrowding. Emily? And Carolyn, Metro Corrections can hold safely about 1,800 inmates, but the Commonwealth Attorney says right now they're close to housing almost 2,200 inmates. Now, some of those inmates may be getting out of jail and going on house arrest. Nonviolent offenders, nonviolent offenders will be eligible for house arrest. Anyone charged with murder, assault, or multiple felonies won't be getting out of jail. Moving low-level low offenders into a home arrest program will free up space in the jail. The Commonwealth's attorney will sign off on each release. Uh, they're going to give us 48 hours notice so that we can look at the list and if we have some objections to voice those objections. Now, some of those inmates could be moved out of jail and into home arrest programs as early as this week. Reporting live, Emily Maha, WLKY News. An autopsy is scheduled for this morning for a dismembered body found in southern Kentucky. According to WBKO-TV, the body was floating inside of a container in Green River in Hart County. State police say the discovery was made yesterday morning. That investigation continues. And authorities believe they found the remains of a missing Ohio College student. The Fulton County Sheriff says investigators found the remains Friday night in rural Northwest Ohio. The University of Toledo student Sierra Jogan was last seen riding her bike Tuesday. Authorities have arrested 57 year old James Worley on an abduction charge related to her disappearance. The sheriff said he anticipates additional charges will be filed in the case. An autopsy has not yet been completed. Well, a man who police say killed his girlfriend is in jail on a quarter million dollar bond this morning. Jonathan Herndon appeared before a judge yesterday. The 48 year old is charged with murder, tampering with evidence and abuse of a corpse. He's accused of killing Connie Thomas and hiding her body underneath a pile of clothing. Her body was discovered on jailed court a week ago. Based on a note Herndon wrote, investigators say it appears it was a planned murder-suicide. He was found unconscious and under the influence of drugs. Herndon is due back in court next month. Well, demolition crews have brought down a building in West Louisville, which was the site of a deadly accident. 71-year-old John Dozier was killed while doing some work for the owner of the vacant building on 28th and Grand Avenue. The front of the brick structure collapsed on Friday. The coroner's office says Dozier was pinned between a large beam and a metal drum. Co-workers of a murdered northern Kentucky couple came together in honor of their memory this weekend. Bobby Jones and Crystal Warner were last seen July 3rd. Yesterday, the gym where Warner worked held a memorial workout for the couple. People who attended say Warner and Jones were the kind of people who brought the community together. You knew when she came in, you knew when she entered the room, you're like, Crystal's here. Basically just out here to support them, show the community kind of what we're here for and uh, actually raising a little bit of money for the families. 
The couple's former tenant, Craig Pennington, has been charged with their deaths. He remains at a Marion County Jail on $2 million bond. Witnesses say they saw him shoot the pair, but police have not found the bodies. And still no arrests a month after a cab driver was shot in the Parkland neighborhood. Abdurrahman Mohammed continues to recover. He was shot one month ago on 32nd and Hale Avenue while working. He is from Somalia and has four children. Yellow Cab is offering a $12,000 reward for any information that will lead to an arrest. Well, several events this weekend honored first responders. People were invited to participate in a youth empowerment 5K run at Shawnee Park yesterday morning. It was sponsored by the Louisville Defender newspaper. This was a community outreach effort for law enforcement and other emergency personnel. Especially as young recruits, we need to, um, we need to get involved with the community early on. Um, Set an example, if you will, learn more about the community. I enjoy the, uh, the uh, camaraderie, I enjoy uh, the walk, and I enjoy the breakfast afterwards. <laughs> the event was part of the 23rd annual Louisville Defender West Louisville celebration. It continues this afternoon at 3. And in southern Indiana, it was Law Enforcement Appreciation Day at the Vintage Fire Museum. The owner thanks police for helping after a break-in at the museum three years ago. He says they caught the su suspect and prevented what could have been a disaster. First responders and their families were given free admission yesterday. A unique flea market is happening today along River Road. This summer, Flea Circus will be held at the American Turners Club. You can enjoy vendors, live music, food, sports, and some circus acts. Admission and parking is free. The event starts at 11. It goes until 7 tonight. And people who stopped by the Blues, Brews, and Barbecue Festival spent much of the day searching for shade. Event organizers say people who plan to come to the festival today Make sure you stay hydrated. The festival runs from 1 to 7 at the Louisville Water Tower Park. All right, yeah, it's going to be yes. hot for that. And hot, they hot, suggest hot. that you bring water with you. There will yeah. be water there, but bring some with you. Hydrate before you go. Some people use umbrellas to keep the shade on mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're going to be talking about another day of steamy weather, perhaps heading to the pools as well. We do have a 20% chance of some shower and thunderstorm activity. Highs, though, we're covering to about 93 degrees, so certainly another hot day for us. We do have unsettled weather on tap for the rest of the week. We'll have full details on that coming up. Now, your WLKY weather with Suzanne Horgan. And good morning. Right now, a live look outside from our camera that we have at the Sheraton. Gorgeous shot here this morning. You can see relatively calm winds with the reflection of the Lincoln and Kennedy bridges in the Ohio River. Just a really pretty picture here. It is warm and it is muggy this morning. We also have a daily threat of shower and thunderstorm activity for the next seven days. An ideal time for you to download that WLKY weather app. It's very handy. We've got an interactive radar. You have in, uh, notifications that can be sent to you. It's a really nice tool to have. We are looking at dry skies right now. That looks to change, however, perhaps a little bit later today with a 20% chance of some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity bubbling up with the heating of the day. You'll notice that we're continuing to see some shower activity across sections of northern Indiana, uh, beginning to push into portions of Ohio as well. This is bringing us some additional cloud cover primarily for our southern Indiana communities. Once we make our way throughout your morning hours, we'll have dry skies. You can see this is 1030, holding on to some cloud cover into the afternoon hours. This is when we're expecting to see some of those storms perhaps bubbling up. Here is the deal. Not everyone sees the rain. It's not going to be a washout. However, if you see one of these thunderstorms firing up, most likely it's going to contain some pockets of heavy rainfall. You know, you step outside, you can feel that moisture in the air. So that sets the stage for the potential for some heavy rainfall once we head into your afternoon hours. And even into your evening hours, we'll have to hold on to that risk of at least some scattered shower and thunderstorm activity. Tomorrow morning, we should wake up dry, and then we ramp up the rain chances once again during the afternoon hours. And we'll continue to have that threat of at least some showers and storms into your evening hours. Same drill, that potential to see some pockets of heavy rainfall. Just basically pretty unsettled weather over the next several days. Right now, it's warm, 79 degrees out at the International Airport. We have a heat index value of 83 degrees already this morning. The air is very muggy, and that's going to continue to be the, the trend as we head throughout the day today. 
Currently 76 degrees in Madison, 72 degrees in Cordon, 75 degrees in Brandenburg this morning. Our forecast high into the lower 90s. We are anticipating temperatures uh, recovering into the upper 80s to lower 90s for your Monday as well. We stay in the upper 80s on Tuesday with a 40% chance of showers and storms, a 30% chance of shower and thunderstorm activity on Wednesday. By Thursday, we're still in the upper 80s with a 40% risk of thunderstorm activity staying unsettled for Friday and Saturday. Well, the countdown is on for the Democratic Convention, which starts tomorrow in Philly. And this weekend, presumptive nominee Hillary Clinton and Senator Tim Kaine made their first appearance together as running mates. Sally Kidd reports from Philadelphia. Taking the stage for the first time as running mates, Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine rallied supporters in Miami. He is qualified to step into this job and lead on day one. Kane is a senator from Virginia and former governor who has a long history with Clinton, something he shared with the crowd in both English and Spanish. I'm grateful to you, Hillary, for the trust that you've placed in me. And we're gonna be compañeros de alma in this great lucha ahead. As the number two guy, part of Kane's role will be going after opponent Donald Trump. From Atlantic City, to his so-called university, he leaves a trail of broken promises and wrecked lives wherever he goes. Analysts say Kane was the logical choice for Clinton. He's safe, he's kind of boring, he doesn't have any obvious baggage, and he comes from a swing state. And winning Virginia will be key to capturing the White House, and Clinton is no doubt hoping her running mate can help deliver. Sally Kidd, WLKY News. Well, Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes is among the speakers at the Democratic National Convention this week. Hillary Clinton's former rival, Bernie Sanders, is also slated to speak at the convention. Clinton is scheduled to accept the Democratic nomination in a speech Thursday night. Well, since Indiana Governor Mike Pence was selected by Donald Trump to be his running mate, there's been some security upgrades to the governor's mansion. In the week following the announcement, there have been protesters outside of the governor's residence. Also in that time, nearly a dozen concrete barriers have been placed along the edge of the mansion, as well as more security guards are visible on the lawn surrounding it. The governor's mansion, built back in 1928, is situated on six acres in Indianapolis. And Indiana's state Republican Party committee will meet this week to pick a new candidate to replace Mike Pence on the ballot. State Senator Jim Tomes, Lieutenant Governor Eric Holcomb, Congresswoman Susan Brooks, and Congressman Todd Rokita. They're all vying for the GOP nomination for governor. Whoever is selected will face off against Democrat John Gregg in the November election. The committee will vote on Pence's replacement on Tuesday. Enjoy a walk or run through the peach trees at Mulberry Orchard, an upcoming event benefiting Big Brothers, Big Sisters. And here to tell us more about the Peach Jam 5K Run and Walk is Amanda and Cindy. Amanda, I was going to say your name wrong. Cindy Watson and Amanda... Geisick. Geisick. I didn't want to screw it up. No I wanted problem. you to say it for me so I didn't mess that up. Thank you both for being here so much. Thank you. Us. What? <laughs> tell us what this is. What can we expect? Well, it's a 5K in the morning, and it's a festival the rest of the day from 10 to 5. So you can come in the morning, sign up for the 5K from 7 to 8 uh, in the morning, and then the 5K starts at 8. You can sign up on, online all week, and there's still spaces available. And the rest of the day is a fun festival with music, cornhole, a cobbler gobbler uh, oh. eating contest at 2 o'clock. And uh, we have lots of sponsors that have stepped up, 106.9, Louisville Family Fund, Derby City DJ, and Kentucky Farm Bureau, Herbie's. So we have all kinds of love. Running so we're excited. Through, running through these peach trees, I mean, ex what's that going to be like for people? Um, it's going to be a really fun 5K. It's a cross-country sort of 5K, so it's going back through our farm. So you're going to um, go through the apple orchard, the peach hmm. orchard, um, go by the corn and the soybeans, our hemp fields, our cows. Um, so get to see a little bit of everything, but it should be a really fun 5K. Why is it so important for you to be a part of this? Um, just a great group to benefit. Happy to be giving back to the community. Um, we've got about 4,000 peach and apple trees, so just trying to get the word out about our local peaches that, we, that are grown here in Kentucky that people can buy locally. Um, so getting people out to the farm and then helping support a great cause along the way. And you tell me these are the best peaches 
Ever. It's the best peach I've ever had in my life. <laughs> so, and it, you have to stand over to something. Stand because it's yeah, all the so juice juicy. dripping. Yeah. Oh so, my goodness. yes. And she has a restaurant on site, which will be open, and a store with all kinds of produce available. And I know Matt Milosevic will be there. Yes, for the pancake breakfast. <laughs> so, if you don't want to run, uh, you can come out and just do the pancake breakfast to kick off the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's included in your packet. If you sign up for the 5K, you get a free all you can eat pancake breakfast and you get a really wow. cool t shirt. That's excellent. So, and it's all to support the children we serve in Shelby County. And we do have a wait list right now. So we're mm -hmm. looking for bigs, big brothers, and big sisters. So that's really why we do this. That's the end game is to get those kids matched. You don't want to have a waiting list. We want no waiting list. Anymore. No waiting list. And this can help with that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, are you going to let Matt cook these pancakes? Well, we'll see. We'll okay. see what kind of skills he has. If he can throw them way up in the air, <laughs> he does, can do tricks. So, well, that's a lot of pressure. All right, we'll see. You need to go just just to see that. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. Here are the details one more time. The Peach Jam 5K Run and Walk is set for July 30th at Mulberry Orchard in Shelbyville. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. WLKY is proud to be a sponsor of the Big Brothers Big Sister Peach Jam. Our own Matt Milosevic, as I said, he's going to be there flipping pancakes, so you got to see that. For more information about the event, visit our website, WLKY.com. We'll be right back. Thank you.